Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and it's time for a Luthier's Quick Tip. If you'd like to help support this channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. Now on with the video. In this episode of Luthier Quick Tips, I'm going to talk about some things you should consider when purchasing a bandsaw to make guitars in your workshop. Now the most important factor is size does matter. Now here in the United States, we identify bandsaws based on an inches measurement. So you have nine inch bandsaws, 12 inch bandsaws, 14, 17, 20, and so on. And what that dimension refers to is the diameter of the wheel that the blade is supported on. You've got a wheel up here and you've got another wheel down here. And this, these wheels are, in this case, 14 inches in diameter. Now I would consider 14 inches to be the perfect size for making guitars in your workshop. Um, and what that also will indicate is the distance between your blade and the depth of the throat for the bandsaw's physical structure. This amount of space is ideal for when you're trying to cut bodies, make necks, cut fretboards, all that kind of work. And this uh, size works great for that. Another issue to consider with regards to size is resaw capacity. And typically, a bandsaw can have you know, a four, like a 14 inch bandsaw as an example, can have anywhere from five to six inches of capacity all the way up to say 10 or 11 inches of capacity. And I've noticed that most of the contemporary modern bandsaws that are on the market today have considerable amount of resaw capacity. And this is really useful for making guitars because the more resaw capacity you have, the more likely you can take a block of wood and resaw it to make book match tops. Now to do that, you need to have at least eight inches of resaw capacity. So you wanna to check to see when you're uh, shopping for a bandsaw, if you can get at least eight inches of capacity. If not, what you can consider doing is to look and see if there is a resaw kit that's available for the bandsaw that you're interested in purchasing. And what a resaw kit usually consists of is a riser block, which fits in here between the lower portion of the bandsaw's body and the upper portion. And that just increases its height. And it also comes with a longer blade guard. And then back here, it has a longer rod for attaching the upper blade guides. And that way you can raise it up higher and get that resaw capacity that you would need in order to book match tops. In fact, since I'm doing a lot of my work with a CNC machine, most of my resaw work is done on the bandsaw. Well, all of my resaw work. And as a result, that's pretty much what I use my bandsaw for mostly. I also will use it occasionally when I need to cut uh, smaller pieces and don't want to spend the time setting it up on my CNC machine. I'll just come over to the bandsaw and just make a couple of quick cuts. But 14 inches is the best size as far as making guitar bodies. You could probably get away with a smaller size like a 9 inch or a 12 inch, but you're going to find that uh, reduced capacity between the blade and the back of the throat on your bandsaw is gonna cause some issues trying to get everything to fit. So definitely I would recommend 14 inches and if you can afford to go larger, definitely go with a larger one if, if that's the case. Now another thing to consider are the blade guides. Most of the uh, bandsaws on the market today that are in the 14 inch or larger range have bearing, we, uh, the roller bearing uh, blade guides and my bandsaw uses the old school blocks and I have since fitted mine with cool blocks which are a graphite block and that's what's used to keep the blade from twisting or wandering as you're making the cut and roller bearing guides work really well for this I actually had a set of roller bearing guides on this bandsaw 
years ago. And I ended up going back to using just the blocks because I found that the roller bearing guides are fairly high maintenance. You got to make sure you've got spare sets of bearings on hand so that you can replace them frequently when they start to wear out and they will wear out pretty quick and you've got to always check them to make sure that they spin freely and if they don't you've got to replace them otherwise you can break blades so um, another thing to consider is dust extraction because bandsaws produce a lot of wood dust as you're cutting and what I've done is I've actually modified mine and attached a fitting at the bottom that I can plug my dust collector into. And you can modify these in different ways to accomplish that. And I've found there's a lot of uh, how-to videos and articles on the internet which explain different methods for doing this. But that's a good idea and something to consider when you do purchase a bandsaw is making sure you have ways that you can extract that dust as you're cutting. Otherwise, you end up with a with a quite a bit of a mess and bandsaws have to be maintained on a regular basis. It's not just cleaning out the dust, but you'll have to occasionally replace the rubber tires or the urethane tires that run around the outside of the wheel and you'll have to replace your guides periodically. You need to check the adjustment of the bandsaw to make sure that the blade doesn't wander or isn't twisting and causing those kind of problems. Um, blades have to be replaced periodically. So uh, even though you can run a blade for what seems to be a long period of time, the last thing you want to have happen is for the blade to wander because it got dull while you're cutting a, an expensive piece of figured wood that you're going to book match for a guitar top. So anyways, those are the basic uh, things to consider when shopping for a bandsaw. Um, another thing to th uh, think about is how you access the wheel. It's nice to have a hinged opening. This is an older bandsaw, which doesn't have that. I have to use the knobs to uh, reinstall the, the, both the top and the bottom wheel covers. So you might want to consider that. Another feature to consider is how you raise and lower the wheels to put tension. I modified mine with a handle which I can turn to quickly raise and lower the blade. So having that, you know, think about that mechanism, take a look at the whatever mechanism is equipped on the bandsaw that you're thinking about purchasing. The easier it is, the happier you'll be with your bandsaw. So those are just a couple of thoughts. The main ones that I would consider when planning to purchase a bandsaw for your workshop. 14 inches is the best size to go with. Make sure it has that resaw capacity. Uh, make sure the, the guides are something you can easily adjust and work with. And the ability to raise and lower the blade should be as easy and simple as possible. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.